Welcome to day six of the April Rite 2012, the Poets' Jubilee Olympiad. My name is Angela Edgar and I am your host. For the start of our new Olympic week, we move into water events and our first Vent Friday. Vent Fridays are where you can write on what you are most passionate or angry about, to swim and dive into your deepest emotional depths. For today, I'm honoured to introduce guest host Zeta Holborn with her visual and audio inspiration. And here she is. My name is Zeta Holborn. I'm a poet and spoken word artist, a visual artist, and a trade union and community activist. I'm the co-founder of Black Activists Rising Against the Cuts, or Barrack for short, which is a national organisation set up to campaign around the disproportionate impact of cuts on black workers, service users and communities, and on deprived communities. I'm a member of the Public and Commercial Services Union National Executive Committee, amongst other trade union roles. I'm passionate about equality and justice and involved in several campaigns fighting discrimination and injustice. My work as an activist often crosses over to my work as a poet and artist, with my poetry and art often described as political and being described myself as a griot of the struggle. My poem and painting for the April Riots are both entitled Hoodies and Hijabs. They are in memory of Trayvon Martin, Shema Lawadi, and all those who have lost their lives in custody or because of discrimination, and as a tribute to all those fighting on their behalf for justice. Zeta's topic and your title for day six of the fifth annual April Right is Injustice and Racism. As it's Vent Friday, please share your personal experiences or your thoughts and opinions on this subject. And here is Zeta's poem and painting, Hoodies and Hijabs. Hijabs and hoodies deemed baddies, not goodies. Blamed for society's ills, justifying reason to kill. Looking for a scapegoat, taking us by the throat or with the shot of a gun. No need after to hide or run because the law doesn't protect the victim. It defends them, the murderers and racists endorsing their hatred. Blame the hood, the cap. The locks, the hijab, the braids, the head wrap, the kufi, the turban, the skull cap, the tam, the scarf, the cornrows, the way your hair grows. But really, it's about the race, the religion, the face of the person wearing, not what they're wearing. Call it ignorance or fearing, but it's the hatred of being racist, Islamophobic, xenophobic, thinking that justifies the theft of lives. Imagine if having your face meant your child wasn't safe when they walked on the street fearful of who they might meet if buying a packet of candy from the store placed danger at your door. Imagine having to warn your child daily of the dangers that might be. Look out son for the EDL, the BMP, the KKK and the police as you go on your way. Oh, and generally, crazed racists armed with weapons to cause you harm. Bag of Skittles, can of iced tea, doesn't sound menacing to me. Beautiful face crowned by a warm hoodie. Could have been Obama's son, your son, my son, but he was the son of his pops and mum. Now, shocked, distraught, grieving, Weeping, feeling hurt and dejected, miserably failed and rejected by a state, the law, the system that doesn't protect the victim, but allows the perpetrator to claim self-defence whilst the law accepts this pretense and records the death of another beautiful, bright, young man as a statistic dusted and done. Their lives were precious, unique, special, not another's to rule. 
every young person with dreams and aspirations is someone else's inspiration. But to the authorities who treat them with disdain, they say they only had themselves to blame. It was the way they looked, spoke, dressed that justified stabbing, shooting them in the head, the chest. Negative, racist, ignorant stereotyping which led to them lying there fighting for one last breath of life-filled air. While snapshots of their time here flash before them signalling the end. For now they must transcend, seeking peace in a better place whilst knowing it was just because of their race that their life was stolen and in that final moment praying that history will not repeat and the good people will defeat the evil of prejudice and racism stamp on the hatred of discrimination drive through justice to replace the injustice so now that's what we must do because if we don't it could be me or you next day next month next year and the horror of that is too much to bear it's time to rise stand mobilize and whilst we dry our eyes of tears wept for lives taken whilst we feel our bodies shaking whilst our anger is raw and our feelings bitter we must remember we're better than those responsible for these crimes against humanity, not allow our standards to be lowered by their profanity, channel our anger into action and unity, rise together with dignity and determined resolve against the system that allowed our loved ones to be labelled victim until we see justice is fully not partially served and those responsible receive what they deserve.